Hi guys, Hero here, and I have painfully reinstalled Windows 11, and this is the MSIcLo 8 AI with Windows 11 rebooted, MSI, M Center, and all of its updates to the latest. And all I've done so far is installed a couple of games that I'm going to be using as part of this video to make sure the changes that we make. How does it improve? And the idea of this video is, I'm gonna give you a quick heads up. This device is really mature. Intel, MSI, and a Windows with the full service X gaming mode have really improved. But there are a couple of things we need to do. So the first thing before we do any changes, you wanna make sure that you do have all the device updated. So I'm just gonna to toggle off, make sure I have the latest updates. And I've already updated it, but I just wanna show you there's a couple of places you need to make sure that it's up to date. So obviously Windows update, so make sure that's all up to date and you have the latest version and that should allow you to have um, the gaming experience full mode. The second place you wanna make sure that you have all up to date is the Windows Microsoft Store and that makes sure that you have the latest uh, apps installed, including uh, MSI Quick Settings and all the other apps that you want to be uh, running. And there is a lot of bloatware, but we'll get rid of the bloatware later. The second place you want to make sure that you have all up to date is MSI M Center itself. So you make sure you uh, do a live scan and that will make sure that you have the latest firmware and BIOS. And this is important because this affects your, um, uh, what's called device settings, your power, and also the overall performance. So make sure they're all up to date and you can see that I'm running the latest BIOS and firmware and all of my uh, drivers are up to date. Now, there is a fourth place, which and this is an optional one, but I recommend you do this, is installing uh, Intel's drivers. Uh, and I'll give you a link for this, but the idea is that you can get directly from Intel itself the device drivers, so that includes your graphics drivers, uh, as soon as they're released. And th obviously you can get this via M-Center, but there is a delay, and this makes sure that you have the latest drivers directly from Intel, because this is one of the advantages of the Intel chipset is that you do get it directly from Intel. So brilliant in that sense. Now let's move on to uh, uh, the actual games itself. So in the next couple of um, seconds, what we'll go through is the three games that I mentioned. So it's Cyberpunk, it's uh, Forza Horizon and uh, Siltsong. And you can see I'm running my overlay. The tip for this is don't use MSI's overlay because it breaks the VRR. And um, you can see, you know, straight away uh, across the games that I'm running, these are really good results. So Cyberpunk was running a, a Steam Deck preset with um, XCSS. Froza is running uh, high with XCSS. And you can see that I'm going to be achieving, I think it's uh, more than 60 FPS, so 63 to be exact. And like I said, I've not made any changes whatsoever. And these are brilliant scores and brilliant settings. And the last one we're going to be benchmarking and using is uh, Silksong. And it's less of a um, F FPS, but what you want to look at is the total power usage and also the uh, wattage usage for the APU. And I'm going to fix it to 120 FPS and see that the changes that we make isn't going to reduce the FPS. And also we'll see how it impacts the power levels. And the idea is like, don't overcomplicate these yet. I'm only going to give you uh, three things, I think that you need to do and change that will actually make any difference to you. So to do this, we do need to go into Windows, uh, um, the device itself. And like I said, three things, that's all we're gonna do, yeah? So let's look at tip number one. So tip number one is to turn off core isolation. So we're gonna search for core isolation when using Windows 11. And you're gonna click on um, the, the first item that pops up. And this is actually a recommendation from Windows itself. So Windows have said that disable this because we know it impacts gaming. Now, what we'll see is that once we do disable this, there's a reset required. So you'll get a little a pop up hopefully at the bottom right, and you do have to reset the actual device before this option takes in place. So do that, and you have to just click confirm and then it'll reboot itself. And that's core isolation that's disabled. I'll include the description where Windows actually recommends this. So let's have a look at what system to straight away our gameplay. So we're in Sigsong, and you can see straight away that it's actually, you saw 19 total watts. So it's actually using less wattage to actually hit that 120 FPS. It's still 
using the 128 FPS, and that's brilliant. Now, moving on to Froza, you can see uh, as it changed the performance, it does it looks similar, and we've still seen the you know similar FPS, so probably not a big difference. But I can see the average, uh, sorry, the max FPS has increased, so slight improvement, but. Like, like I say, it's not these aren't going to be game breaking. The device is mature and Cyberpunk again. You'll see that actually, I can see the total watch is very similar, hardly any change. But uh, I, I think again, uh, when we go to the actual stat screen itself, the FPS is near enough the same average, but the max has in, increased slightly. Yeah, so this uh, what's called recommendation from Microsoft and something that I would say you do anyway has. Um, reduced the uh, FPS slightly, but um, also uh, increased the uh, uh, FPS. Now, the second step is the bloat Windows 11. So you can see I'm in the install app section and there's so much crap that Microsoft gives you, including Teams, the weather app, um, uh, Outlook, all of, all of the things that you might want to use. But, you know, for a gaming device, I don't think it's useful and it takes away, you know, storage. I think um, I forgot to take a before and after. I think I saved around two gigabytes of storage. I know it's not a lot, but the idea is um, <laughs> the storage is gone expensive and, uh, you know, every little bit helps. So why I used to do this, and you can manually install apps itself, but I use Raphael's Win 11's Debloater, and it's such a simple tool. I've used it on various devices. It's well known in the community and it just works. So all you need to go is to the, go to the GitHub. I'll include the link in the description. Copy the... PowerShell script and you're going to search for PowerShell um, and what you need to do is run this but as an admin and that's really important so run it, click. you can see me clicking as run as an admin you're going to click um, a run and you're going to paste that script in very much simple you're just going to follow the commands and it's such an easy script so it's going to download the app application itself it takes a couple of minutes um, and then it's going to ask you a couple of questions. So the first one is that, um, and I recommend just use the default options, yeah, because it's well tested and it just works and it's worked for me. So this is the recommended changes that uh, Rafael has um, said that we need to get rid of or, or disable. And I, the second option is make sure that you want to only remove the apps that he, he also recommends, yeah. So it's been validated by our community. This will just give you an idea of all the stuff it's going to be doing. Uh, and then we just want to hit continue. You will get an option to create a restore point. It's good. Uh, I don't think you need it because it's not doing anything really intrusive to the device. So you're going to hit click. Yes, it's going to create a restore point and then it's going to enact the actual debloating. And you can see all the crap that Windows has installed that it's going to get actually get rid of. Now, this will do a couple of things. It'll, like I say, you improve your storage. It'll include your it'll increase or reduce your RAM utilization and therefore your CPU idling. Yeah, so you should end up with a quieter device. Um, but anyway, once this is complete, you probably like always want to do a quick reset, and it's not a long process. Yeah. Um, now let's see what that does to the actual gameplay. So first of all, back in Silksong, and interestingly, this is the first time running Silksong. You see the actual the total wattage. I think uh, it did peak to 25, but you can see it's actually dropped to 19 watts. So it's quite good to see that it's actually reduced the ut utilization, yeah, or uh, increase your battery life. Again, um, running now for the horizon, uh, I can't see much different. Is the average, uh, uh, what's it called, wattage uh, gone down? It looks very much the same to me. And, you know, I I've seen a one FPS increase. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely had an improvement. You know, whether you can call it groundbreaking or not is up to you. And again, in Cyberpunk, I think the same thing. I've seen, you know, the frame pacing looks slightly better. Um, but when we go to the end results, I think, uh, again, we say slight FPS increase on average. So the max and min has gone up. So free uh, performance upgrade. Now, the last step is probably the most... Uh, impactful. So what you want to do is go into the widget store and we're going to install something called Tooth and & Claw. And Tooth & Claw is made by a community de developer for um, the MSI um, devices. Or So it works for the 7 and 8 and I think it works for the A1M as well. But this uh, application is really useful. So it's broken down into two parts. So it's the color uh, master, but we'll talk about that later. What we want to focus is the performance. Now, 
under performance, I'm not going to go through all of these options in this video. I'll include a, a video because this is detailed stuff and it impacts uh, uh, CPU boost performance and if you want to turn it on and off. Also talks about how is the CPU or the APU and the GPU scheduled. Now there's a whole video and I include the link to that. Watch that because it does have a massive impact and these settings can quickly change your battery life or the performance that you've seen. Now let's move to some optional stuff. So these don't change your performance, but you run these because actually it makes the um, claw more user friendly. So the first thing, if you're going to use the Windows gaming mode or full server experience, you probably want to install the Steam Grid uh, widget app. And, and the reason for that is uh, when you start installing games that aren't from um, the Xbox app or Microsoft store, then the actual logos or the grids or images are a bit rubbish. Um, so you install this app via the widget store, but you do need to go to settings, privacy, and scroll down to the section called file system. Um, when you click on that, you should see the permissions for the Steam Grid app that need to be enabled. So just click on, and once that's done, you can go back to the app and you can see some games that haven't been um, loaded uh, via the Xbox app. So I think the example in this, uh, you know, I've been playing Cyberpunk. And if you hit, look, Cyberpunk just appeared. And I'm going to refresh it, make sure I've got no other uh, games installed and it's found the game. And you can quickly just change it to any of the logos that you want. So I'm going to change it to something but no meaningful yet or something better than the uh, original. And simple as that. This is just a hygiene factor. Another optional step. So we uh, installed Tooth and Claw um before so let's talk about color remaster now here are my settings and i'm not saying they're the best settings but by default the um settings or, or the screen is beautiful enough but the blacks are a bit washed out and using my on-screen settings uh, and also the sharpening you just it looks a bit more oled like yeah and i'm not saying these are the best go around and look and ready a lot of people have their own settings and preferences but you can look visually, if you have a look at the examples that I've just got, and it's got a nice little um, display, it looks so much more sexier, yeah? So this doesn't impact performance, but it does make it look better. Now, one of the other optional things, um, and one of the last things I talk about is NEFC. So NEFC has to be installed by GitHub, sadly, so I'll give you the link for that. And what this does is that if you don't like the Xbox 360 app as your full screen experience uh, mode, you can install this app and you can, for example, uh, use um, Play Night or Steam Big Picture Mode or One Game Launcher or, as your full experience rather than Xbox 360. Lastly, this is now really optional. Um, you can look for a device encryption. I personally uh, disable this. However, it has very little impact on performance Yeah. There's hardly any games nowadays that um, do multiple read writes um, from the storage, uh, and this the idea behind this, it, it, you know, you have a bit of overhead with the uh, uh, overhead with the encryption. So if you disable this, you're supposed to increase your load time, but it's hardly going to change your FPS. Yeah, but just be aware of if you do do this and you have personal set of files in your thingy, probably not your recommendation to do. Anyway, just to summarize it, these are the things I recommend and the optional things, and you know, let's be honest. There's not much you need to do now to make this device work, yeah? I just want you to enjoy your games. Anyway, if you find this video helpful, please do hit like and subscribe and talk to you soon.